It's the claim of a medical breakthrough that's uh, sparking huge hope and for some deep worries. The same Elon Musk who owns Tesla, SpaceX and X, formerly Twitter, announcing over his social media platform that his Neuralink company had successfully implanted its first computer chip in the brain of a human. Uh, details are scant. All we have to go on are a pair of tweets, uh, one which says that the patient is uh, recovering uh, well. Uh, initial results showing a promising neuron spike detection. Musk calling the innovation telepathy. That's the brand name. It's aimed at paraplegics at first. Uh, the uh, company last fall got the green light for human experimentation. Um, in, in his uh, uh, series of tweets, uh, Elon Musk uh, stating uh, how uh, the, uh, um, the, uh, it will enable control of your phone or computer and through them almost any device just by thinking, imagine if Stephen Hawking could communicate faster than a speed typist or auctioneer. That is the goal. Well, for more, uh, let's cross to New York City. Uh, Sid Johns, uh, Dr. Sid Johnson is associate professor at the Center for Bioethics and Humanity at the State University of New York's Upstate Medical University. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, are you excited or nervous when you see these tweets? I'm not excited about the prospect of Neuralink being implanted in a human. We have seen some fairly disturbing information come out about their experiments with monkeys, um, about failures of the implants, causing infection, causing uh, swelling, a tremendous amount of suffering for those monkeys. And Neuralink has really not so far demonstrated certainly not to my satisfaction, that they know how to run a human trial or that this device can be safely implanted in a human. What is the objective? Is the objective to help paraplegics walk? Or is the objective, well, to replace our, our wallets with, uh, like you already have, you know, those chips in your wrist uh, for some people? Well... I guess it depends on whether you believe Musk when uh, he talks about what he's hoping he'll be able to do with these devices. The initial goal of first in human trials is to demonstrate safety. So in this initial individual who allegedly has the implant, right now we have no details about the location of the implant, about who this person is, about their age, about whether they have a medical condition. So one initial goal, and it's a, a, a large goal, is to demonstrate that they can safely implant this device device in a human being. The company has said that their aim is to provide a therapeutic device that will enable persons who are paralyzed, for example, to, to be able to communicate, to use a device connected with Bluetooth to a phone or a computer. So that's called a brain-computer interface, to, to use that device to allow this person to control that. Research on these kinds of brain-computer interfaces has been going on now for decades, and you know we have seen some developments there, the ability to control a robotic arm, for example, or to use a cursor on a computer. It, what, what kind of troubles me is the sentence in that uh, last tweet we showed, initial users will be those who've lost the use of their limbs. Initial users, so the implication is, it won't just be for those suffering from medical conditions? Well, I think Musk's ultimate goal is a brain-computer interface for everyone. He's talked about this being something that any person could get and that it would be able to enhance ordinary human abilities. So one, one goal would be, for example, we might be able to play our computer games more quickly and more efficiently. Uh, we may be able to use our phones without actually having to use our hands. There are a number of claims that he's made. We can also wonder because of Musk's interest in um, transhumanism and, and in human enhancement, what their ultimate goals are for using these devices. But we are, of course, 
far from a world in which everyone in the world might have a device like this, and far from a world where everyone wants to have an implant uh, attached to their brain. We have many people in the world who still don't have access to the most basic health care. So I, I don't think the goal of having uh, a brain-computer interface in every human is going to be something that uh, is, it's certainly not in our near future. I'm not even sure it's in our far future. Dr. Johnson, you mentioned at the outset uh, the questions over whether or not uh, physiologically the patient is reacting well. But then there's also the question of uh, whether or not the, some, this kind of technology would enable uh, nefarious forces from, well, hacking our brains. Right. So there is already evidence that there devices that humans have have been hacked. So we have seen this happen with um, with pacemakers that are implanted in people. There have been attacks where those devices have been manipulated or taken over by hackers. What their purpose was is, is hard to know, but one of the concerns with having a brain implant here is that the device could be hacked. The Neuralink has said that there they're working on using Bluetooth to enable the implant to communicate with a device, with a phone or with a computer. Can that be hacked? What are the risks if that does get hacked? It's, it's less a worry, I think, about will someone hack your implant and gain control over your mind, and more a concern that someone could hack that implant and gain control of whatever devices that implant is connected to. So control over your computer, for example. If you are using this implant to, to control a motorized wheelchair, could they get control of that wheelchair or any other device that you are connected to? And of course, Another privacy concern for people with these implants is that Neuralink will have access to an enormous amount of a subject's brain data. And we don't know what they plan to do with that. Will they keep it? Will they record it? How are they going to protect user privacy? Um, people who have had experimental brain implants have had concerns about what that brain data might reveal about themselves, about their lives, and about their activities. Sid Johnson, when it comes to bioethics, when it comes to exactly what you've just been describing, how strong is oversight these days in the United States? How strong is regulation? So Neuralink has uh, received um, FDA approval to conduct trials in humans for this device. The actual oversight of the device is an entirely different question, and we don't really have uh, very good safety or oversight for these kinds of things once they leave the research phase. Within research, you know, there are requirements that a company or a scientist is required to satisfy. But once they leave, we have seen, of course, how vulnerable so many of our devices are to manipulation, to hacking, and so on. And these are real concerns about, you know, what might happen with these devices ultimately. Another concern for the people who are receiving an implant in a clinical trial or an experimental implant is who's responsible for that implant once the research is over. It's not a, a small thing to have your skull opened up and to have an implant um, inserted into your brain. And so removing it would require an additional surgery, for example. But leaving a device in someone's brain could also cause problems for them long term. Uh, the electrodes could degrade. The implant itself could degrade. They might be vulnerable to infection. You don't want infections in your brain. That's really not a good thing. So, you know, what's going to happen to someone, this initial person who receives this implant, uh, once the experiment is over? Will Neuralink remove it? Will this person want it to be removed? Long term, will it remain in their head but inactivated? These are all questions that uh, are not really a addressed in, in the research protocol. We're, we're out of time, but just very briefly, what do your students think? Uh, you know, my students aren't really thinking about 
things like brain implants at this point, I think there's a lot of hype about these and what we might be able to do with them. But as a on the ground reality for, for ordinary people, I don't think at this point there's a lot to be excited about. There's been research on brain computer interfaces going on for, for many, many years at this point, for decades, and many, many different clinical trials. Neuralink just happens to be making lots of really big and bold claims and getting lots of attention for it. But I don't think that they are very far along in what they're doing at this point. All right, that said, uh, Dr. Sid Johnson, thank you so much for joining us from New York City. You're very welcome. Stay with us. There's more to come here on France 24. More news. We have breaking news out of Spain uh, with Parliament rejecting an amnesty bill for Catalan separatists. Our correspondent Sarah Morris will update us in a moment.